Hello and welcome. Let's start this video with the one word that represents our entire existence, matter. Everything in the universe is made of matter. In fact, its definition is the substance of which any physical object is composed. Anything that has mass and takes up space, no matter how tiny or massive, is matter. You probably knew some of this, right? Well, in reality, all of those statements are false. Not everything is made of atoms and molecules. There is stuff that has mass and takes up space that isn't matter. It's completely against common sense, but it exists, and we call it antimatter. Antimatter is not a theory or hypothesis. It is a proven phenomena that has the potential to change humanity forever. I'm not exaggerating, and in this video, you'll see why. Antimatter denies common sense. So let's start off by fully understanding what it is. To put it simply, antimatter is identical to matter in every way except charge. An antimatter electron has a positive charge, and an antimatter proton has a negative charge. It's like a flipped version of the matter we learn about in school. A chunk of it would look and behave identically to matter, yet it's completely different. Because matter and antimatter have opposite charges, and we assume our universe is electrically neutral, equal parts of matter and antimatter should have been created at the Big Bang. But at the same time, when matter and antimatter come into contact, they annihilate into pure energy. So logically, the equal parts of matter and antimatter should have perfectly annihilated each other and left the universe as an energy-filled void. But that obviously didn't happen, because if the universe was a void, we wouldn't exist. This problem is called the matter-antimatter asymmetry problem and is one of the top unsolved mysteries in modern day physics. However, the leading theory is that in the long run, matter had a slight advantage over antimatter, ultimately leaving all the antimatter annihilated, but some matter remaining. That little remnant could be what forms the one trillion galaxies in our universe today. Crazy, but if there's no more antimatter, why does it matter? Well, not only is antimatter some weird physics thing from billions of years ago, it also has a massive practical use. Like I just mentioned, when it reacts with matter, it annihilates into pure energy. Let me put that into perspective. Nuclear fusion, the process going on in stars and hydrogen bombs, converts less than 0.4% of mass into energy. Antimatter reactions convert 100% of mass into energy. That is absolutely, insanely powerful. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we're already making it. Scientists have been making antimatter for over 86 years. Physicists constantly produce antimatter from high energy particle collisions and other experiments. In fact, at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, they created 300 anti-hydrogen atoms that they then contained with electromagnetic traps for over 16 minutes. Cool. So, if we made enough antimatter, what could we do? Well, with enough antimatter, your electricity could come from antimatter power plants. Astronauts could be exploring other solar systems with antimatter rockets. The possibilities would be endless. And remember, all you need for an antimatter reaction is contact. No unbelievable temperatures or conditions, just physical contact between matter and antimatter. That's why it's so promising. And also, if you are worried, antimatter reactions do not cause any long-lasting harmful radiation. In fact, it's already used for medical imaging and could eventually be used as a kind of cancer therapy. Wow, so how do we get enough antimatter? Well, that's the problem. Currently, we only produce antimatter on nanoscopic scales. 
To mass produce it, we need to go big. For that, there are two options. The first is antimatter factories, specially designed ion beam colliders with the sole intent of producing large quantities of antimatter. However, such factories would require, let's just say, unsustainable amounts of electricity. There's another option though, supernova. Every 50 or so years, one of the 100 billion stars in our galaxy explodes. In an unimaginable fireball of destruction, atoms are ripped apart and flung into space at near light speeds. These tiny flying particles are called cosmic rays. They fly all across the galaxy and rain down on planets, including our very own Earth. Every second, 30 of them fly straight through your body. And guess what? Some of those are antimatter. Using electromagnetic scoops orbiting Earth and other planets, we could collect significant quantities of antimatter cosmic rays. We'd finally have an appropriate fuel for interplanetary and interstellar missions, and maybe even for power here on Earth. So, to recap, matter has an angry, identical twin named antimatter. They fight whenever they meet. Antimatter has a long-lasting grudge about the huge fight they had a few billion years ago. But when they fight, they create tons of energy that we can eventually use to explore the cosmos and power our cities here at home. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, it would be really appreciated if you like and subscribe. One last thing, if you know somebody that's unaware of our angry identical twin, please share this video with them. I'm sure it will be worth their time. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Thank <laughs> you.